for a new video. So, in this new video, uh, what I'm gonna show you is how we can look for creating data that contains a relationship. So, a relationship in uh, EF can be tracked, okay, through the framework itself, and relationships uh, between tables of our database are automatically created. So let's have a look at our track model. Our track model, as you can see, there are several fields. Some of these are standalone. For example, we have a composer. We have a name, a price, uh, the size in bytes, the length in milliseconds. Uh, and then we have some other properties that instead they are being uh, other tables. So for example, the album, the album model refers to model which also contains an artist. Um, then if we go for media type, we see the media type also has an ID and a name. And finally, we're gonna have a genre, the genre which has also a name. So when we're going to create a track, therefore we either have to select something pre-existing from the database, for example, an album we already inserted, a media app that is already present in the database or a genre that is already in the database or we need to create those or a combination of the two. So let's have a look. Now today, not to bore you too much with myself writing uh, all of this code, I've actually uh, created those before starting this recording. Okay, I'm going to explain everything line by line for the uh, the way in which this constructor works uh, is exactly um, in every other video we saw so far in which I make tests um, and this is no difference. Now in data context uh, I've added, uh, uh, in the previous video I've added artists, not because I want to directly access albums, media type and genres, I've also added these three uh, items to my data context um, class. So. Let's do, uh, first of all, let's have a look at the first example. I want to insert the Bohemian Rhapsody uh, song from Queen in the database. Okay, now uh, let's start with the items that are standalone in the class. So we have a name, a composer, a price, the size and the length of the song. All of those are standard strings or numbers. Price has this uh, decimal, uh, is a decimal type and is, has the, that's why it has this M uh, uh, suffix because basically it represents a decimal floating point number. Now, for the album, we're going to create a new album and the album is made by, if we look at the album class, we can see how the album has also a relationship which is optional with artist and it's going to have an artist and the artist is Queen and the title of the album is A Night at the Opera. Then we have a media type, which is a new media type of name vinyl and genre, which is a new genre and the name is going to be Progressive Rock. All right, so what are we are going to do here? We're going to take data context and then we add um, all of those changes. So what is going to happen that EF is going to look for uh, this object here and it's going to see, oh, okay, we have a new album, we have a new artist, we have a new media type, a new genre, and it's going to update the database accordingly. So in here, I add, uh, um, I add the Bohemian Rhapsody class. Uh, I don't use add async and the reason I've explained it in a previous video, which I invite you to watch if you haven't already. And then with the save changes, I'm going to actually save those changes into a database. And then the next bit which I'm going to do, I'm going to track to receive the first track that has been inserted in the database. And because this is a test, this is the only track in the database. And the name of the track should be equal to Bohemian Rhapsody. Okay, so let's run this test and let's see what happens. So as you can see, the test passed and a new track named Bohemian Rhapsody has been inserted. So, but how about 
everything else that we insert. For example, uh, did we actually create a new artist with the name Queen? So let's find out. So here I'm retrieving the first artist that I've inserted and should be equal to Queen. So now we're gonna do expected Queen dot name dot should equal to Queen. At the same way, if I actually receive uh, the album, the only album in the database, should be titled A Night at the Opera and the artist rate should be Queen. So let's add those ones as well. So we can actually move um, all of those above this line. So we have a track, the expected uh, Queen. Maybe we should uh, rename this into uh, expected artist. Then we can have data context dot albums dot first and here we say that the artist should be queen and then expected album dot title should equal a night at the opera and then expected album dot artist dot name should equal now I'm actually receiving this warning here because expected album dot artist could be null um, and the reason is that if you look at album as you can see the art is actually uh, an optional property so this could actually be null so let's have a look at what happens. Let's run this test again. And as you can see, all of this data has been saved um, correctly. Now in here, we, what we are doing uh, um, is uh, we are creating uh, everything brand new. So everything can be encapsulated into the class. However, um, what if our uh, entity relationship model um, has uh, some classes that are already into the database? So for this reason, I've created a, a second set of examples in here in which the items are already into the database. So here I have an album and I have an artist and I add the album and I'm gonna save the changes and as you can see here I'm saying uh, I'm gonna retrieve this uh, artist from the database by the way at teach test database is reset so at teach uh, test you actually have a fresh copy of your database um, the album uh, I'm also showing how you can actually do an include uh, to ensure that the artist is gonna be present it's not necessary in this case everything is going to be retrieved but that's something you can do to explicitly say, well, include uh, this um, item. Now, uh, now the album, uh, the queen from database, so because it's the only artist in there, should be queen. The title should be A Night at the Opera, from the, and the artist name should be queen, which is what we saw above. Then here I have a, a vinyl for the media type and the genre progressive rock. I add those and the save the changes into the database. And then I'm going to check that those items are actually what are expected in the database. Finally, I can actually create uh, my new track. However, there is a difference. The album from database, as you can see, it actually refers to album from DB. And album from DB is this one. It's a net of the opera and the artist is queen. All right. So what is happening is happening that once I save the, the track, um, entity framework is going to say okay this is the album this is the media type this is the genre and it's going to handle the relationship for us so that when I go back and they say give me the first track in the database the, I'm sure that the track name is going to be Bohemian Rhapsody I'm sure that the album associated with the um, title is going to be A Night of the Opera 
um, and that the name of the album is going to be Queen. Okay, so let's have a look and then let's talk a little bit about this. I'm going to run the test. And as you can see, my test uh, passed again. So EF essentially understands those relationships that, that have to happen. Inside the table of our database, items such as the artist ID, okay, which is the relationship with the database um, between the album table and the artist table are going to be populated for us. This is, but all of this is actually transparent for us and it is saved for, um, it's actually saved from, um, it, it's spared this for us, we don't have to actually handle it manually. So I'm going to, um, to wrap up here for this video, so I don't want to make it too long. But I hope this was useful and uh, if you find this useful, please leave us a thumb up, please subscribe to the channel and if you really, really like my videos, maybe you can even think about um, uh, becoming a patron. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye bye.